Good morning. This is Dr. Robert, and uh, on this edition of Five Ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, we are on location down by the river in the rather chilly early morning pre cicada hours so that we can discuss, with the help of the river, the water element in general, and in particular, the water element as it exists in your body, my body, and the bodies of all protoplasmic beings. All beings that are protoplasmic, including you and me, are basically water. When you get older and stringier like me, you move in the direction of being 60-ish, 65-ish percent water. When you're younger and plumper, possibly like you, then you're maybe 75-ish percent water, but we're mainly water. That means that we have to circulate our water really well if we want to be healthy. With the help of this river, there are two things you can notice about water. Number one is, water is always headed downhill. Whenever it gets a chance, it will go downhill. There should always be an opportunity for it to go downhill out in nature if you want the water to flow freely. Inside the body, the water is also flowing downhill. And it is the very fact that we are able to get the water to move back up in the body is because we have had plenty of opportunity during hundreds of thousands or millions of years of vertical bipedic existence as humanoids to evolve methods for getting the water to come back upwards. When astronauts go out into space, as soon as they get free of the Earth's gravity temporarily, there is a swelling in their heads and upper bodies because the mechanism by which we are circulating the water that expects there to be gravity working against us, that mechanism has been temporarily interrupted. So we are always having to counter, counteract the effects of gravity. This is why it is so important to be active. Even if you're not doing cardio every day, you need to, at the very least, walk. You need to walk, 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 because walking causes these muscles to work. These muscles act as pumps to get the water and the blood and the lymph and everything else to move back up into the central part of the body where it can be recirculated. Circulation is the most important thing with water because the other important factor that we want, or uh, item that we want to discuss this morning is stagnation. Where there is insufficient water or where there is abundant water but it is not circulating properly or where there is too much water, often there will be stagnation. And when there is stagnation, things will not look like this beautifully calm flowing river. They will look like this pile of leaves and sediment and other stuff that is accumulated there and is growing algae and other things that are not so agreeable. And they are doing that because they have become sequestered from the general flow of things in your organism. So if you have any difficulty, let's say getting up in the morning and wondering what you should do with yourself, you might take a moment to remember a beautiful river that you have spent time around and spent some time hopefully communicating with, and perhaps by bringing that image of that gently flowing, peaceable, healthy river back into your awareness, you can encourage yourself to move around to do your yoga or tai chi or other chi and pran exercises to get out and walk, to move, even when it's kind of chilly, a bit uncomfortable, but on a daily basis, it's important with your mind, because of course, where your attention goes, your prana will go, and it's prana that's causing all the circulation in your organism. When your mind is in the right space, when your mind is encouraging that kind of flow, possibly when your mind is, is remembering something like this very river or a similar river, you will be able to facilitate that circulation of the water element in your system that is one of the most crucial things that is required to keep you in good health now and on into the future. This is Dr. Robert encouraging your water to flow freely and requesting you to have a very fine day.